I am tired, yes. Truly, I am tired. But it sometimes with my tiredness, it's still not working so well in competitions. Sometimes it's good. But we will see how it goes. <laughs> What's up, guys? It's just for hoop, and then we're going back down to 790. Big fella, can I see your wrist straps, please, sir? Oh, fuck you, I'm, I'm not even going to bother measuring that. Some of the people that were like from here to the floor, yeah. You ready? How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing good. It's good to see you. Good to see you. It's a strongman catwalk. these guys that first lift sets the tone so it's great when you see them all coming back everybody's pretty happy with their first lift so. hello from greetings from Canada <laughs> it's horrible I've got vomit in my mouth it's gonna come out my nose at one minute I can't understand what, why, why I can't, why I can't uh, lift. So they had the axles reversed. The 400 was where the 375 should have been. So, uh, 
nothing really can do about it now but make it right. So B will do it. It'll be it'll be alright. Obviously he's massively upset. He came out back, all the athletes have had a discussion, voted on the best solution. They decided so the choices really were keep it in the wrong order, but then everyone knows they're going for a really fast first log. Or change the order and give those guys the opportunity to go again. It was put to a vote, 12 voted to go again. So that's what's happening. I'm like the lady out of the grudge. I know, that's why I'm doing this now. Puts everything to bed last year. He didn't do so great on that. It's fucking come out and smashed it. Incredible. Three. That's how a Mexican does it.
Right, guys, so day one has come to an end. Yeah, I mean, obviously the Atlas Stones didn't go as well, but yeah, let's talk about the four events. For So I was coming into this deadlift for me. Raw deadlift has never been a big, strong event for myself, as a lot of people know. You know, like I can pull big numbers in suits, but I've never really had a training block where I've done um, uh, raw, unfortunately. Um, so, you know, I started, started training a bit more raw in the gym, and I mean, it's paid off. I had to pull my... First two lists were planned, those were the planned lists, but then the third one I kind of just had to pull heavier than, I had to pull 433 pound or whatever it was to try and beat the next person, which I knew in my head I wasn't going to be able to do it, so it, that's why it kind of just it, it didn't go off the ground. So anyway, decent enough result there. Obviously I'm going to be going back after this comp to try and keep on the raw power coming and stuff. Um, you know, There's big deadlifters in this now as well, so I need to kind of get the raw deadlift back up a wee bit. And then second event, second event was a really good event for myself, uh, Axel and Tulog. That's an event that I was really wor working hard on in training. I think the extended time as well, that we got two minutes instead of one minute 30. I mean, there was a bit of a muck up at the start, you know, as Brian sh kind of said, he apologised for it all, which, you know, kind of ruins it a wee bit because you, you get you get psyched up, then you don't get, then you psyched down. So we were switching on and off a lot, but um, yeah, I knew I could do five reps and, Five reps is what I did. Strict the uh, refereeing was really strict as well, which was good for everyone. So that was a really good uh, event for myself. That was one I wanted to kind of prove I was like top three or something in the world. Then keg toss, keg toss was actually it shot me. And I think a lot of people as well. Like a lot of people went out earlier than I thought. Um, maybe the keg toss. My lower back by the time I got to this keg was pretty fried up. I think I'm so my my lower back's been having a lot of. Uh, pumps a lot of kind of problems with it the last few weeks or so I don't know why it's just uh getting pumped more pumped up than normal so when I got to that keg you know I, I, that's when I went out on the one I think the round before um I did go round on like I literally <laughs> chucked it and made a mistake but I think for me I, I don't think it's the power it's just where I stand I need to start practicing where to stand we've got a we've got a throw thing in the gym so but you know like this like this with uh, a lot of us Hooper as well went out in the same like wait as me and stuff, so it's uh, um, Wes as well, and we were the ones that got the world record, so fair play to half for absolutely killing the world record in the keg, killing an absolute massive deadlift as well, and then being, uh, and then obviously the last event of the day. For me, this was, it was a hard one because, like with the keg toss results, you know, I was, I was wanting to go out maybe like second last or third last, and I knew what to do, but, um, you know, I don't really, I don't like to make excuses, but for me that was the slippiest stones I've ever been on. Backstage, the stones had already been cut. Like there was other, there were different stones covered in tacky. They were stuck like an absolute. They just stuck really good. You know, I was rep, like doing two or three reps of the two or five for warming up. But then going out on stage, um, you know, you, usually they get usually they're buffed and a bit sticky before you go out and use them. And a, a few of them were top heavy, which you know was it's it's frustrating because I really thought like when I had the two when I had the six hundred pound stone. Um, like stuck to it I just felt it didn't feel heavy at all it just kept st uh, slipping and when, when you start slipping there's nothing you can really do it was a risk you know I didn't I I said to kind of I said to myself when I seen these events and I said to Brian as well when we did the one on one chat that like all I have really my eyes on is a 600 pound if that makes me come first if it makes me come last then so be it it's, Brian's put it into the show for for a reason and I think he wanted one of us to do it and I was kind of the only one to attempt it, and yeah, I, you know, it might have been a big mistake, but it is what it is. I wanted to, it, it, it cost me a lot of points, but it's either if I did that, I would have won the event. I took the risk, and I ended up coming like what, 12, like 14, 13, 12 or something in a stone event. Yeah, it's my, it's bittersweet because you know, obviously I'm <laughs> good at stones, but I maybe could have done the 550 if I didn't attempt the 600 and maybe got one or two reps, but I don't like that. I don't want to be going and ta attacking, attacking the 450 or 500 and like, you know, maybe, I think if I did the 450, I would have maybe gained another two spaces maybe. I think 500, maybe another three. So it wouldn't have really done much to me anyway. Um, so I really had to just get basically, well, it would have been in the end 550 for three and, or 600 for one, which is a, also a massive ask as well. You know, half for went out there and smashed it. The thing for him as well is that I usually go last in stone. So to, he went last, so he kind of knew what he had to do as well. So yeah, it is one of those things. Maybe if I'd gone last, I would have been like, right, I'm not touching the 600, but you know, slippy tacky. It just, I also, you know, it means I can learn from this as well. It means that I can start winning uh, 
sleeves as well. A lot of us that were bare skinned, it, it slipped a lot. Uh, so, you know, I'm going to go back home after this event and train stones bare skin, but also train stones and sleeves. I think it's good to have that, you know, that mix up where if it is hot, I can do do that on. Because then tacky really doesn't become a problem if you have sleeves on because you're sticking it to a kind of more like a, a velt, like rubber, uh, not rubber, but just you're t sticking it, you're not sticking it to skin, so you, you know, your skin sweats and stuff. But when you have this sleeve on, doesn't matter if you're sweating, it's just you're sticking it onto a surface. So, yeah, I think I'm going to start doing that, buy, buy some stones and do that. But, you know, it is what it is. I risked it, it didn't pay off and... Yeah, but after day one, I'm pretty happy. Obviously, going into day day two now, it's a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a stretch. I'm never going to win this competition now. That's a, that's a fact. Unless Mitchell Hooper and Halford do something ridiculously bad, then I won't. But I, you know, I might catch third place. But you know, my eyes probably need to be now on top five. I mean, you know, the people in front of me are still a very good athletes as well. It's, I think like I'm seventh place and sixth place is like six points ahead of me. So I really need to kind of. You know, go go into day two and hit it with hard. I'm going to be one of the first up in the squats, which is an unfortunate thing for me as well because, you know, squats has never been a a big a big a uh, a big event for myself. I've never really had to train at this heavy in the gym before. So you know, I did like two or three kind of heavy sessions for one or two reps and see. But we'll see what happens. I mean, this is this competition. I'm just going to go out, give it my all, and see if I get three or four reps of it and. It beats a few people in front of me, then I'm gaining points all the time. And then the same with the power medley, and then finish with the fingers and, and the uh, power stairs. But uh, sorry, dumbbell, yeah, it's not the yeah. So yeah, still a lot of points to play for. But like I said, day one, I took the risk in the stones. Unfortunately, it didn't pay off. If it paid off, I would be sitting here with 16 points and probably be like, you know, third place, and it would be a close run. But unfortunately, I'm sitting here seventh place, and the risk didn't pay off. But it is what it is, and. Uh, we just go into day two and keep fighting.